Hi friends, I'm here with a yoga offering. As always, please go at your own pace, rest whenever you need to. Feel free to skip things or change things if they're not working for you today. For this practice, we'll start by using a couple props. If you have yoga blocks and a strap, that would be great. And you can improvise with other things you have around the house. A scarf or dog leash could work instead of a strap. A couple books, firm cushion um, could work instead of a block. So we're gonna begin sitting in Virasana. So for many of us, some props are useful to make this more comfortable. We're basically gonna be sitting in between the heels, kneeling. And I do recommend a couple of blocks or something under your hips. And if your ankles are tight, a little something under the ankles. And just have your strap handy or whatever you're using for a strap. So, if this does not work for you, of course, skip it, sit how it works for you in a chair, cross-legged. The nice thing about this pose, if you can have it work for your knees and ankles, is it puts the pelvis in a neutral position, so it's easy to sit upright and feel the full length on all four sides. So let's begin with eyes closed, and you can just rest your hands in your lap. Slow down your breath. Feel the sit bones like two feet that you're standing up on, standing tall. Let your eyes open, keeping a soft focus. And feel free to open and close your eyes as it's useful for you. Let's grab the strap or whatever you're using for a strap. We're gonna take it really long and bring it up overhead and back again. We'll do this several times. And each time we do, inch it in a little closer. So you get to a distance that may be a little more challenging to go back and forth. And you can keep inching it in until you get to your edge, about as close as you can manage. Now there are creative ways you might avoid the stretch, like going one shoulder at a time or bending your elbows. Try not to do any of those things. A little bend in the elbows is fine, especially if you have loose joints and tend to lock or hyperextend. But we are trying to get into that tight area of the shoulders, chest. And honor your edge. So you might have your hands further apart than I do. That's okay. We're each meeting our edge where it is. And keep inching it in until you can't go any further. So you can just barely make it over the hump. Okay, when you're at your minimum distance, at your edge, we're gonna hold it straight back at that most challenging point. And then while we're there, see if you can find neutral in the chest, the spine. Feel your head connected to the rest of the spine, nice and tall. Relaxing unnecessary effort. And then release. Let's drop the strap for a moment, interlace fingers in front, and put some pressure between the arms like you're gonna pull them apart and that can spread between the shoulder blades. Get into the upper back. And then release. Let's take the strap in the left hand, bring your left arm up, bend it back, and then right hand behind your back grabs the strap. Inch your fingers in towards one another as close as you can get them. Now some of you may be able to reach your fingers, in which case you can let the strap drop. Elbows go in towards the midline and back towards the wall behind you. Again, trying to find neutral spine. The chest may jut out here. See if you can drop it, maybe draw the belly in a little. Feel your sit bones, feel what's touching the floor, your props, lengthen up away from that. Now we'll 
gentle release. You can let your strap drop. Lean over onto the left hand and then circle the right arm. Your right shoulder may feel a little creaky after that last pose, so go as slow as you need to, but do try and explore your full range. Lubricating the joints, working out any tightness. Finish up the circle you're on, coming to a side stretch, reaching through the fingers, but still stay grounded through both sit bones. Now let your head fall towards the floor and take your right arm out and down until your shoulder pulls down, stretching right side of the neck. Keep your head hanging as you press into the bottom hand to come up and then you can use that hand to help lift your head. Staying nice and relaxed. Same thing other side. Bring the strap into your right hand, take your right arm up, bend it back, left hand behind your back. Inch your fingers towards one another, maybe reaching fingers, maybe not. Two sides can be quite different, so just notice that. We can try and bring balance through our practice, through awareness, through adjusting habits, but the two sides will most likely still be very different. release. You can let your strap drop, lean over onto your left hand, start to circle, sorry, lean onto your right hand, start to circle the left arm this time. Whoa. Biggest circle you can make. Finish up the circle you're on, come to your side stretch, reaching long through the fingers, grounding through both sit bones. Let your head fall towards the floor, and then left arm out and down until the left shoulder pulls down, stretching left side of the neck. Press into the bottom hand to come up, and then use that hand to lift your head. Let's take a couple of half circles with the neck evening out the two sides. Next time your chin is to your chest, stay there, interlace your fingers behind your head, let your elbows hang down, stretching the back of your neck. Release the arms, head floats back up. Let's bring hands to the floor behind us, fingers facing forward. Roll your shoulders back, your elbows back, lift the chest. And you may need to be up on fingertips depending on how many props you're sitting on. Heart lifting like you're filling up a balloon, floating it up. And then release, come up, bring your hands to your knees and pull your chest back, sink back through your belly, drop your chin, rounding. And then flip the hands the other way, slip your fingers under your knees and press your palms towards the floor. And they may or may not touch depending on your wrist flexibility or just opening up. And we'll take a few lion's breaths, inhaling through the nose. As you exhale through the mouth, stick out your tongue as far as you can and eyes look up and back as far as you can. So really stretch your face. Inhale deeply, exhale through the mouth. Again. Really go for it. Getting out all that stale air. One more big one. And then release. Take a couple big wrist circles. And then we're gonna finally release the legs. So I like to do this one set of joints at a time. We'll start with the ankles. So you can move your blocks or props out of your way, tuck your toes, and then come back to a squat. Now from here, you can rock your weight forward and back, kind of rehabilitating toes and ankles. 
And then we'll go for the knees, start to straighten the legs. We can walk hands and feet away from one another and come into a downward facing dog and really take your time. If you have socks on still, you might take those off. You can even reach your hands back and give the knees a little rub if you need to. Just yawning open the backs of the legs can help rehabilitate the joints after that long kneeling position. <sighs> Check in with the rest of your body in this pose. Each pose is kind of highlighting different aspects of what it's like to be in this body, this moment. Feeling that fully. And of course, using that feedback and all your prior knowledge to take good care of yourself as best you can. Let's walk hands and feet towards one another and hang and ragdoll, feet hip width apart, parallel. You can bend your knees a little or a lot. Maybe a sway or shake out here. Bend the knees a little more and slowly roll up. Let's come all the way up to standing. We'll step up to the front of the mat, coming into mountain pose. Hands together, feet can be together or apart. Let's take a full A-series sun salutation. Inhale, arms sweep high. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Step or hop back, lower down. Up dog or cobra and back to down dog. Let's take five deep breaths. And remember, you can take the time you need for all your transitions. Everything I'm suggesting is simply a suggestion. Each time you rest, you can rest in a pose that feels right for you. If down dog does not feel like a rest, maybe come to child's pose or sitting or onto your forearms or knees. <sighs> Last breath here. Just come back through down dog and step or hop your feet forward, inhaling flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, up to standing. Exhale, arms press down. Again, inhale, arms high. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Step or hop back, lower down. Up dog or cobra and back to down dog. This time from down dog, let's take the right leg up, bend your knee in and start circling this bent right knee, making the biggest circle possible your hip joint. Next time your leg is up, reach it straight. Circle your ankle a couple times. Big circles, both directions. Take your leg a little higher and then bring your right knee towards right upper arm. Extend it up and back. Take it across towards left upper arm. Reach it up and back. Right towards the center of your chest. Extend it up and back. A big step forward. High lunge. Inhale, arms up. Sink low. Let's grab the left wrist, take it across. Come over to the other side, grab your right wrist, take it across. Back to center, interlace fingers behind your back. Release arms up, tip forward, standing splits, hands to the floor or to a couple of blocks. We'll do this with hips square and with the upper body, letting go like ragdoll. <sighs> Big step back, warrior one, drop the back heel, inhale, arms up. Let's take eagle arms, right elbow on top. Put a little pressure between the elbows like you're going to pull them apart. Sink hips low. And then 
come onto the toes of that back foot. Lean your weight forward and step into Eagle, Garudasana, knee on top of knee. If you can, hook your ankle around your calf, do so. If it doesn't reach, just hug it in close. Last breath here. Unwind, half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. You may want to grab a block for your bottom hand or bend your bottom leg. Expanding past the tips of the fingers, past the top of the head, past your left toes or heel. Last breath here, release. Make your way back to down dog. You might take a vinyasa, you could just step back. You might move in some other way from down dog. When you're ready, left leg sweeps up. Bend your knee in and start circling. Deep breaths. Next time your leg is up, reach it straight. Circle your ankle a few times. Big circles, both directions. Take your leg a little higher and then left knee towards left upper arm. Reach it up and back. Take it across towards right upper arm. Send it up and back. And right towards the center of your chest. Extend it up and back. Big step forward, high lunge. Inhale, arms up. Sink low, let's grab the right wrist, take it across. Come over to the other side. Back to center, interlace fingers behind your back. Other thumb on top this time, open up the chest. Release arms up, tip forward, standing splits, hips are square, nice long neck, letting your head release, feel the weight of your head dropping. Last breath here, step back, warrior one, eagle arms, left elbow on top. Lift the chest, sink the hips low. Shift your weight forward, come to the toes of that back foot, step into Eagle, Garudasana, knee on top of knee, deep bend in the supporting leg. Working what's useful, softening, releasing what's not needed. Release, unwind. Half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. Take your time. You can modify or adjust however you need to, doing your best. Going towards your full expression. And letting it be just like it is. Last breath here. Release. Make your way back to down dog. Five deep breaths, down dog, child's pose, sitting, something else. Coming to ease. Last breath here. Come back through down dog and step or hop your feet forward, inhaling flat back. Exhale, fold. Let's bend the knees and come into chair. Utkatasana. Hips go low, 
head reaches high. See if you can feel that same even equal length that we had in Hero Virasana, that first pose of class. Last breath here. Release, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen. If you'd like, let's take a crow pose. You may need to step a little bit back from the front of the mat. Hands shoulder width apart, knees to the upper arms. Shift your weight forward. More weight in the hands, less weight in the feet. If you don't want to do crow today, you can hang out in a forward fold or a squat. Feeling what you are doing, whatever you're choosing. In a moment, we'll make our way back to down dog. You're welcome to attempt hopping or drop your feet and step back. You can take a vinyasa or not. From down dog, when you're ready, right leg sweeps up. Step forward, high lunge. Arms up. Let's take a twist, left elbow across. Get it as far over as you can. Take any variation of this you prefer. If you want to do a low lunge, you're welcome to drop that back knee. If you want to take a different arm position, you can. Last breath here. Release hands to the floor or to your blocks. We're going to drop the back knee. If you want to pat it, you might grab a blanket or cushion. Hamstring stretch. Inch the front foot forward, flex the toes back. So you end up with hands right under shoulders, as high as you need them. Hips right above that back knee. And if you want to slide further forward towards splits, you are welcome to. If you did slide forward, slide your way back. Let's bring both hands to the inside, turn out through the right foot, shift your weight forward, coming to lizard pose. You may be on blocks, you may be on your elbows, the floor, or hands. If you want to add a quad stretch to this, you could bend the back leg, reach for it, and draw it in. Feeling where you are, wherever you are right now. Last breath here. Release, make your way back to down dog. You might take a vinyasa, you might just step back. Just feel what you're doing. From down dog, when you're ready, left leg sweeps up. Step forward, high lunge. Inhale, arms up. Come into a twist. Take whatever variation you did on the first side. Last breath here. Release, hands to the floor or to your blocks. Drop the back knee, pat it if you like. Hamstring stretch. Hmm. Going to your edge and at any moment you might go deeper, or you might back out. If you did explore splits, Hanumanasana on the first side, you can try that again. did slide your way forward, slide back. Lizard pose, bring both hands to the inside, turn out through the left foot, experiment, shift your weight, adjust the angle of that front leg, maybe add the quad stretch if you did so on the other side.
And let's release, make your way back to down dog, feeling what you're doing, checking in with your body. We are going to wrap up this practice, or I'm going to wrap up this practice. You're welcome to keep going. If you want to join me in winding down, you can take any last pose you need. So you might come onto your back, you might just ask your body what's still needed. If there's any last pose or stretch, take your time. Feel whatever you are choosing to do. No right or wrong here. Eventually, coming into a symmetrical, relaxed position. And if you need to adjust your clothing or grab props or want to do a little self-massage to help you be more comfortable, take your time. Even when we're doing a short practice, when there's not a lot of time, it's so good to just take a few moments of stillness. <sighs> Sealing in what we've just done. Integrating what we've just done and getting a moment of just being, letting go fully. Slowly begin to wiggle your fingers and toes, move your wrists and ankles, and then take a big stretch out through your arms and legs. Bring your knees in. Roll to one side. And use your hands to help you up to sitting. Bring hands together at the heart. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining me for that quickie. Hope you have a good rest of your day.